Hi folks, it's Switchback. Your sleep system will make or break your trip, hands down. And so in this video, I wanna go over some really common mistakes that many of us have made or continue to make with a sleep system. That sleep system includes your sleeping bag or your quilt, your sleeping pad, and maybe a pillow, just for definition's sake. Getting a sleeping bag that is too narrow to be comfortable or one that is too wide to keep you warm or too long. If there's a lot of dead airspace in there, that's a lot of heat loss that can happen. And so it's harder for you to stay warmer in a bag that's enormous. But if you can't move in it, if you don't sleep like a matchstick, then you don't want something that's crazy narrow that um, you can't move in and get comfortable. Now that said, if you have a larger body, you're gonna wanna make sure that you can zip it up. Look at the measurements online if you're ordering um, and certainly try to lay in it, test it out. Make sure that you can zip it up and move comfortably inside of it. Or you can consider a quilt. With that, ignoring the width or the shape of your sleeping pad. And so again, if you're gonna sleep like a starfish, you're gonna want room to have uh, something underneath you between you and the ground and if you are sleeping with you know your legs apart or whatever you're not going to want a mummy shaped pad and a lot of people you know don't want a 20 inch wide pad they want you know there's up to 25 inch or even wider than that out there now and you might also look at a rectangular pad versus a mummy pad also if you're a side sleeper you're probably going to want something a little bit thicker than most people might want because you don't want your hips to hit the ground Trusting quilt or sleeping bag ratings, taking them at face value. Big mistake, they are totally BS. Even if they are EN rated, which is a sort of standardized method, still doesn't matter. So there's the comfort rating, comfort rating, the um, transition zone, and then survival rating. And I will tell you that for me, a comfort rating is still not a comfort rating. You know, for some people, maybe it is, but don't count on that being accurate for you. Looking at the reviews for a particular item can be really helpful using your resources to ask people's opinions about what has worked for them. You know, if you're a cold sleeper or a hot sleeper, that makes a big difference. Going for the cheapest thing you can get. And I realize that budget is a factor here, but it can literally be a fatal mistake or potentially make your trip miserable. And I have a whole video right up here all about saving money on gear, going with the lightest option you can get. Again, this can make for a terribly miserable trip. It could be, you could be cold, you could be really uncomfortable. Um, weight is certainly an important factor, but it should not be the only factor that's considered. So if you have the luxury of an outdoor store nearby, you know, going in and talking with the salespeople can be very helpful. And some, of course, no more than others. Try to get someone who's knowledgeable as best you can, but they can help you find what will work best for you and help educate you if you'll let them. With that comfort, not testing out your sleeping pad before you go. It may be terribly uncomfortable. It may, you may not be able to figure out how to inflate it. It may have a hole in it. There are a variety of things, reasons why you'd want to try it out before you go. Not considering your sleeping pads insulation or R value. This is where you're going to get all of the insulation that comes from underneath you. And the ground can suck that heat right out of you, even with a really warm sleeping bag. So when you're sleeping, you're sleeping bag the part that's underneath you is all compressed from your body and so the air gaps are what keep you warm so when that is compressed it's not keeping you warm that's where your sleeping pad comes in it's really important that you consider that insulation leaving your patch kit at home to save some weight some space it is tiny just take it you will absolutely invite Murphy with you on your trip if you don't. You want to have a way to repair your sleeping pad. Not airing out your kit when you get home. And this includes both your sleeping bag, your sleeping pad. Air it out in the garage, in a spare bedroom, or wherever you can. But unless you are totally confident that it is 100% dry, no, you know, no condensation from when you were sleeping or from the ground or anything like that, just air it out when you get home. And with that one, storing it improperly. So for the sleeping pad, you're gonna to wanna to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Some of them recommend storing it in the stuff sack. Some of them want you to leave it open. You really wanna follow whatever the manufacturer says. 
with regards to a sleeping bag or quilt, especially if it is down, you want to store it loosely. And so you can hang it, you can put it in um, a pillowcase if it doesn't come with a storage sack, or if it did come with a storage sack, use that. Whatever works for your storage situation. Blowing up your sleeping pad with your mouth. You can do this. Plenty of people have done it for a long time without any issues, but it can shorten the duration of the life of your sleeping pad. It can cause delamination where it separates the layers and inflates in spots. Um, it can cause cold spots with that moisture. And there are rumors, some of them founded, some of them unfounded, about mold inside. Not entirely sure how legit those cases are, but it is a concern that some people have. Most decent sleeping pads will come with a pump sack or you can buy it from the manufacturer or the manufacturer will have an upgraded version of it that you can buy. Or you can use a pump like the Flextail Gear Tiny Pump X, which I reviewed and I will put that video right here. Much easier when you get to camp and you just want to go to bed. So I hope you got some value. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.